essential, miner. essential This is what you jobs. call miner. There's a two inch hole in well, the Well, Princess Beauty has awoken. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. It's early. <laughs> Stop. Princess Not Beauty. <laughs> I started work early this morning <clears throat> and I've already made a mistake. We are going to go to America. The delivery is from uh, Annapolis area down to BVI, so pretty cool, like couple of weeks sailing there that we'll have, and a bit of a chill out in BVI's before we head back home to Australia for Christmas. We have to put the boat somewhere while we go back there. It's so far away, and we have not been back now for three years because of COVID that we do want to spend a bit of time back there. So that's the plan for the next few months for us. We're super excited about it, and when we come back in uh, January. We do have some pretty exciting plans. After a relaxing few weeks with family, we made the exhausting 56 hour journey from Australia to Trinidad, where Millie had been patiently waiting for us. Well, the first activity of the first day back on the boat, and it is to get all of our transducers out. So there's a speed transduce transducer here and a depth transducer and we bought some new ones when we were in Australia so we're gonna to have to replace them. Um, pretty much the reason why is because uh, our wind transducer at the top and also our speed one are a bit iffy sometimes so we just thought you know what let's try and get to the 21st century and go all um, in 2K 2000. Mm, in 2K? Uh, all an MEA 2000 and uh, and so we'll that's pretty much what today's gender is Adam is still jet lagged and sleeping so I've been pretty much using tools playing music and all kinds of stuff and he's just slept right on through it so he must be seriously jet lagged yeah let's get to it one out it has a, um, a plywood backing plate on it so you kind of like score out the plywood backing plate get that one off and then Thankfully, it's not stuck in there. I don't think it's stuck in there with 5200. I think it's just stuck in there with 4200, which means that it's kind of like semi-permanent. So it was a lot easier to get out. So once I just kind of scraped out, ugh, using one of these things, all of the sealant, and wiggled it around a little bit, popped right out. I mean, with a bit of muscle. It wasn't just like, oh, pop, oh, it went. <laughs> a little bit of muscle involved, but not too bad otherwise. Now to get the speed one out. Well, Princess Beauty has awoken. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. Princess no, Prin Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm It's jet lag, come on. <laughs> it was up to like 3 a.m. Not fair. Yeah. Just because um, Turbo here is at like <laughs> midnight. To actually, <laughs> hilariously, oh. literally when I was on the very last transducer and just managed to pop it out, he comes emerging like, Hey, I'm ready to work now. My <laughs> heart's a bit late. All the really work's well. been done. <laughs> now it's time. You're the butcher. You open it up and now I have to close up and seal it off yeah. and make it all pretty. Anyway, I've just popped them both out. So we're going to go downstairs, uh, probably him with his first coffee, and um, go and see mm. what it looks like. See the two holes that I have created. Hey. Goopy. Yeah. No shortage of goop. Sealant. Wonder if it's. 4200 or 52. I think it's 4200 because it yeah. came out too easily for yeah, 5200. I, I, so I wouldn't I wouldn't personally use 4200 here. Yeah. 5200 you mean? 5200 so. I don't think why anyone would use 4200 period. You mean 5200? 5200. It's early. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, Just to clarify we're meant to be using 4200 because it's meant to be a semi-permanent bond not permanent, which sealant is what 5200 four. sealant it does. Oh cool, that one's just popped right out. Yeah. All the sealant left. Alright, you want to thread her up? So much. Okay, cool, I got it. I'll put this ring on. Whew. Oh no, you know what? I didn't put the donut on. One donut. It's so dark in here. Alright. Oh, I'm so good with remembering all the other ones. It's just started raining, which means that uh, it's gotten very dark in here. But thank God it's not that kind of torrential rain that we had when we first got here, where we literally just couldn't dry anything. And we had three days to pack up the boat, and we weren't sure that we we're going to do it in time and have everything dry in time before we stored it for three months. But it's okay. 
there's just a little sprinkling of rain. Um, so I'm just um, getting the wires through the boat for the depth transducer and the speed transducer. Um, I've kind of tested it first of all before actually installing it with like 4200, made sure that they do work, that um, them being kind of thrown around in luggage on the flight actually hasn't affected them. Um, but you'll hear Adam right now, so he is using a grinder. Hmm, surprise, surprise. Um, I'm gonna go show you what he's doing though. Uh, you're probably gonna be like, oh dear God, what, what happened? Like, <laughs> I'll just go and show you. I felt this a suitable time to come and film you what you're doing. You're not sanding the hull, you are grinding our hull. So we have a seacock. Um, okay, so a seacock is something that lets you lets you have water that goes from inside the boat to outside the boat or outside the boat to inside the boat. You can close them and open them as and when you want to control the water flow. So we have a seacock that goes um, from our tap, from our sink in the forward bathroom outside. So all the wastewater that you wash your hands with goes outside the boat. So when we were in the water last time, like literally the day that we went into the water, we decided to open up all the seacocks again and we realized that that seacock actually had a broken fitting attached to it. So in trying to get that broken fit, oh, and at this, that stage we were just like, you know what, don't mess with it. We don't really, like we can wash our hands in another, in another sink, it's okay. So we kind of closed that seacock up and just forgot about it. And now when we're on the hard again, and we know that we can kind of mess around with stuff that's underneath the waterline, we thought, okay, let's try and get that, um, let's try and get that broken fitting off. In trying to get the broken fitting off, we've actually broken the seacock. So thank God we didn't try and do that in the water. Um, but what we've pretty much decided to do is because it's just literally for like a drain for you washing your hands, it just doesn't feel like it's seacock worthy. And we can just run some extra hose to the aft or the shower um, drain, the seacock for that. So many seacocks floating around. Pretty much, we've just decided to get rid of one seacock and to join that hose up to another one so that we have one less hole in the boat, one less way for water to get in, one less kind of issue, um, potentially a potential issue that could happen. So what Adam's doing right now is that he's grinding like a massive area around where the seacock used to be um, and what is now just a hole. And uh, we're gonna fill that one in with some fiberglass. And when I say we, I mean completely you. <laughs> this is okay, your job. You're better with fiberglass than I am. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's as much as you can manage, but I've done like, it's an inch and a half hole. So I've done a 10 inch or 12 inch, I think, overlap. Um, yeah, the, the width of this is 12 inches so that when I fill it with progressively smaller patches of fiberglass, um, there'll be lots and lots of overlap, and so it'll be really well blended with the existing hull, uh, hull. So that when all the all the little pieces go in and it's all filled and fed, it should be like like there was never a hole there. <laughs> How much dust? Just, yeah, yeah uh. I kind of forgot to plug up the hole before I started grinding, so the uh, forward head is now a winter wonderland full <laughs> of it's fiberglass dust. Every single time we go in the hard, it's like, oh look, another winter wonderland. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so we're making good progress. We're pretty much day three on the hard, and like, we've smashed out or started a lot of jobs. As much as Adam has been having some bad luck, he broke the winch. Oh. Stupid design. <laughs> it's what really kind stupid. of a design requires it's you really to like hammer on an integral piece really to get the bloody thing off? It's so silly. I mean, they have, they have learned the air of their ways because it's changed since then. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. humbug. I'll, um, I don't yeah. even, I've, I'm just, I looked at it and I was like, silence. I'm like, I'm not even going to address that right now. I'm just, that's, that's, another, that's another day job. So yeah, like we're making good progress. Um, we're scheduled to go back in the water in about 10 more days. And so um, I think we should make that time. It's good. Oh, like really? just a really, really brief kind of period of, of getting out of the water. And then so we can quickly go back in. Just do some like very minor, Essential, minor. Essential this is what jobs. you call minor. There's a two inch hole in the boat. Minor. We've been doing this too long. <laughs> two inch hole in the boat. Yeah, minor. Just like that'll buff out. <laughs> oh, wow. Fine. <sighs> we are plugging that hole today. It's go time. So, as you saw before, I beveled out the outside and I've done a slightly smaller bevel on the inside. So, we're going to plug the inside first and then sort of just 
well, fill the hole from the inside till where it's sort of paper thin, and then race outside and then do the same with sort of, these are the inside ones, the outside one is substantially larger, but progressively larger discs, so you, actually it's the op opposite. You put the large discs on first, and then work your way back to the tiny dimple in the middle. Um, I'm not super concerned about the inside one, that's more so that we get the chemical bonding from both sides of the hole, um, and then sort of it's like a two competing plugs, if you will, and then that sort of mechanically bonds to the rest of the hull, which has been ground back to good glass. So that's what we're doing. I won't, it's really crowded in there, so I won't film the inside, but you'll see when we do the outside how we're gonna do the different circles. Come on. Ugh. No <laughs> spitting, bad llama. <laughs> I highly recommend having a bottle of uh, epoxy on board as well. It just, it's so nice to be able to just uh, whack some fiberglass on something as required because um, you've got a reasonable amount of stores on board it doesn't take up a lot of room and uh, yeah it's it's saved us more than once like now plugging a two inch hole in the boat with just stuff we had on board also we I know Adam said it doesn't take up a lot of room we actually have an excessive amount of fiberglass <laughs> because of our Babe, because of our time <laughs> on the hard recently Don't tell people um, about our shame <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think people would need any more than a liter, on, seriously <laughs> This is an excessive amount. There's like a bloody, I don't know how much a gallon is. There's like a gallon there. 60 yards don't of need that. biaxle, 60 yards of woven roving, and 80 gallons of resin. That's all anyone needs. Just a basic supply. Anyway, Alan's mixing up with some silica as well, just for a bit of strength and just for thickening thick. purposes too. All right, time for downstairs to do the outside section. If ever there was a day or a morning when it might rain, it's probably going to be this morning <laughs> but luckily this part of the boat um, because it's kind of on the underside doesn't actually get wet so it's not too bad uh, all right so this is the hole at the end of the day and uh, I'll show you the circles that we've cut out as well so pretty much we've got matting and then woven roven um, fiberglass that we put the big layer on first uh, for ads what's uh, matting good for uh, the chop strand mat. or the chop strand, sorry. Chop strand's good for volume and like sort of all round. It's it's not it's not good for structural strength. It's just like a good all round volume filler, sort of moderate strength. Basically, the longer the strands, the stronger it'll be for structural purposes, like bending, etc. And the shorter the strands, the more like it'll pluff up and retain its volume when you saturate it. Uh, so the circles are exactly the same size of. Um, chop strand and woven roven uh, so that provides a little bit of filler and strength. Like to do the honors. Okay, it's the morning after. We had a plastic like this on the inside as well, and it like stops the drips from running down the hull, etc. Came off pretty easy on the inside. Let's see about the outside. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's a great trick. Except this little bit here. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, that's just excess resin. So, yeah, that's worked really well. Super smooth, super hard. Love it. So now I've got to just tidy up these edges and do some filling and fairing, make it nice and flush, get it, you know, get it so that it, it's like there was nothing there. What you doing? Ah, just hanging out in my favourite room in the house, <laughs> in the boat. Um, well, Ads and I thought that since we're on the hard and all, um, and we've been kind of doing like a few pottering around jobs to make the place look a little bit nicer, i.e. painting the bilge and stuff like that, um, we thought that we'd get inside and do the anchor well as well. Um, it had a, a really, really ratty plywood divider in here. So what we've decided to do, uh, uh, and it was so ratty where it was like flaking off, coming off, we could move it and everything like that. So what we decided to do is just cut it all out so that we have one big room of which we can store our chain, obviously at the bottom, and uh, fenders as well. We have, uh, you know, we've kind of um, 
been progressively adding fenders and uh, we need the room for them so this would be pretty good um, so I'm just at the moment just cleaning wiping it down getting all the old paint off so I can paint it again and build a floor to it oh, that's my job for now so I started work early this morning <clears throat> and I've already made a mistake my mistake was not filming <laughs> So Adam's patch, which he's been like lovingly making smoother for days and days and Three days. Three days I've been working on this beautiful smooth fairing. Um, just painted right over it. And I uh, <laughs> finally, I was just like, oh look, I'll just sand it off this morning and put some primer on it. And he's like, did you film what the repair looked like? I was like, no. <laughs> Whoops. I think once the whole boat is painted this colour, I would defy anyone to find the spot that I repaired. Yeah, so, so really, really happy, happy with that. that. One less seacock to wrestle with. Yep, which is awesome. We've got some, uh, we've just gone out and bought a bunch of hose as well for redoing the plumbing um, so that we can run the sink drain from forward and back, which is really nice because we haven't had to use that sink for a year, so it's pretty good. And then uh, we're also going to prime our new instruments that are in here too. Sorry, our new transducers that are in here too. So, what does your day look like today? A lot of painting, I guess, really. Tick it off the list, I think. I think I'll just paint all day and then it's done. Just get that last thing keeping us out of the water knocked off the list today. Well, our instruments are mostly in, our transducers are in, and everything's kind of wired up to the back of our new instruments, which are here. All we need now is for the new wind transducer to go in up the top of the mast. Waited for a weekend to do it because Adam's uncertain whether you're actually allowed to go up the mast on the hard. Um, and I, I do get it, but anyway, we're going up the mast. <laughs> Let's put the new transducer in. I have no idea what faces me up the top of the mast because I'm pretty sure when we had our mast down quite recently, like last year, I remember looking at our old one, or the one that we have up there right now, and going, Oh, that's a little bit welded into place. I'm glad I'm not messing with that one. Um, and now we're having to mess with it. So a little bit nervous that it's not going to come out pleasantly. Birds are happy today. <laughs> Birds are happy though. That's just what I said. <laughs> I would have thought that given that we're right next to a tree, the birds would have decided not to make a nest. But just this morning I found a little, little baby nest in the back of the boom. So I'll have to trans... Uh, Transplant that very <laughs> gently before the splash. Tired already. Christmas weight's coming back to bite me. <laughs> Alright, so I've got both of them up here. Now I'll just need to see if the new one fits in. I've tried my best to get the old housing out and it's just it's pretty much like welded in there. I, I'm like starting to thread the screws that are in there. I don't want to do that especially being up the mast. So I'm gonna see whether we can just reuse the same wire. All right, it's all plugged in and Adam's just wiring some things up low. Let's see if it works. Fingers crossed because this will be a really, really nice, easy fix if it is the case. Ooh, coming down. Fortunately for us, the existing wiring was still good and our new wind transducer worked perfectly. So we could finally finish up the install of our new instruments. chain locker is done my chain locker is done look how much room there is so we are uh, as a reminder we took out the dividing wall here because it was rotted plywood and uh, gave it a good spruce up a good paint fixed some of the um, hose that was going down here gave it a brand new floor of uh, starboard seaboard starboard I think is the marine version of it pretty much put all of the wires through a conduit <laughs> And uh, also some nice um, backing plates for the windlass because um, we just kind of had like really small little... Uh... Oh my goodness, I am so brain fried. This is hot and I've been in the hard now for a little while. You'll also notice this horrendous rust line um, and that is for our staysail chain plate. That's what that rests against. And we're actually in the process of getting a new one made up from a welder, so that hopefully shouldn't be rusty anymore, or like it should probably fit really nicely into the decks, and any and all rust patches on there obviously won't be there because it'll be brand new. 
So we'll, uh, we're gonna try and fix this whole area up and make it look a little bit nicer than what it currently does now. So one of the things we've got to put back, which we're probably telling a lot of you how to suck eggs, and apologies if we are, but it isn't, it's one of those things that you do it, you forget all about it, or the boat came like that and you don't even know to do it, and then you hear a story about someone who didn't have it or forgot to do it, and they have an accident, and it is a bad accident. So what can happen is when you run out all of your chain through one reason or another, if it's not attached to the boat at what they call the bitter end, you lose your boat or you can lose your boat. It goes wrecking ball through the marina or through the uh, anchorage and then ends up on the rocks. So our bitter end is this ginormous piece of timber. And what we do is we take the road on the end of the chain, which will be spliced to, to the chain. The free end then gets sort of a many, many figure eights through this bit of timber and the bit of timber is in the anchor well. So should the worst happen and we run out all of our chain and all of our rope, this then has to get bang up through the, the horse pipe, which is the opening for the windlass, and it can't. So that's basically what our bitter end is. Yours can be a ring bolt through a bulkhead or a chain plate or whatever you want it to be. Just make sure that something is on the bitter end and the boat is attached to it in some way and those two things can never part. So that's what we're gonna do. There, it's nothing special. Pretty simple, basic stuff. But in order for us to lose all the road and all the chain, either the, split, the splice on the chain to, to road has to break, which is, you know, if that's gonna happen, nothing can save you. The chain has to break, if that's gonna happen, nothing can save you. Or you have to run it all out and it's not tied off at the end. So for that to happen to us, this has to tear off completely or this piece of timber has to miraculously find its way through the two inch hole that is the horse pipe, or take the entire deck with it. So if you stack that up against a cleat, it's pretty good.